that's it. Hello, one and all, I go by Emblaze, but you can call me Jordan, and this month I had the opportunity to go to my very first YCS. Despite playing Yu-Gi-Oh! on and off for years now, I've never been to an event outside of the locals. Flying thousands of kilometers to Sydney, this was a hugely anticipated event, albeit one where I kept my expectations measured, only to find it to be an absolute disaster in many ways. This is my disappointing and disgusting YCS experience. So we begin in November of 2023. I participated in my first OTS championship, Piloting Tears. I ended up with a top 4 finish. My duelist in crime, Jaden, did even better, going second. This one is both invites to the 2024 Oceanic Championship to be held... somewhere. The 2024 Oceanic Championship locations were still yet to be announced. This led to a bit of a dilemma for us. Despite winning this huge opportunity, Neither of us knew if we could actually attend these events, uh, due to our careers not being the most flexible. So, Jaden raised an alternative idea. Um, we could instead attend our first YCS. For the unaware, YCS, or the Yu-Gi-Oh! Championship Series, is the premier flagship competitive Yu-Gi-Oh! event. YCSs are held throughout the year in cities across the globe, allowing duelists to come far and wide to compete in a high-level tournament environment. These events also offer side or public events, uh, even if you drop by but don't want to play the current meta or might end up dropping out early, you can still have the ability to win prizes. Um, as an onlooker, they've long been seen as the event for the Yu-Gi-Oh! TCG. Filled with many types of coverage, lots of different streams, it's very much the go-to for this community. Australia holds a yearly YCS every year since 2014, sad, some worldwide events, commonly held in the early months, usually around January. Just so happened, the YCS had recently been announced to run in March of 2024 in Sydney, so with Jaden's declaration, we signed up. Why not? Our first road bump was the January 2024 ban list. While, as I mentioned, I played Chillaments in the OTS Championship, Jaden played Unchained, and now both our decks were heavily hit and shells of their former selves. Considering we got personally attached to these decks with those top 4 results, we were a little disappointed, but it's Yu-Gi-Oh! and we had planned some pivots. Myself, I pivoted to Voiceless Voice, uh, a deck that I was very much excited to play, while Jaden pivoted to Fire King Snake Eyes, following the Fire King structure releasing. Mason, the third member of our deck-led team, also joined last minute on Senchir- Oh, what? Oh, never mind, he switched to Branded last minute. Less than a month before the event, finally the public event schedule was released, with confirming the Time Wizard Edison format, much to my enjoyment. We rushed our decks together, I piloted Vayu Turbo, Jaden on Diva Hero, and Mason on Dragon Turbo, respectively. We don't have an Edison scene at our locals at all, and considering our love of the retro formats as seen through our flagship progression tri-series at the moment, I was very excited to play these in paper. The week of the events, I noticed the website has yet to be updated to include an FAQ section, despite it listing as coming soon. Being completely foreign to these kind of big tier 3 events, I was looking forward to studying up on them. Knowing what to hunt, my goals, and how these events work, it would just help me educate and have a better experience overall. But there was nothing. So red flags started showing up around now. I could find a US FAQ which spoke of the prize wall with the ability to win tickets based on your match wins in the side events regardless of where you finished them overall. However, other information on this FAQ clearly showed this would not be used for oceanic events. The EU website had their own FAQ, considering EU commonly runs the oceanic events, however this FAQ was dated January 2022, so I just ignored it. Even on the day before the YCS, the Thursday, no FAQ was posted yet. So we figured, what the hell, let's just go to the event on the Friday, see what it's about, and figure it out as we go. This is the flagship event for Yu-Gi-Oh! after all. It's a multi-million dollar brand. Expectations, while not high, knowing how this brand's commonly managed, we're still at a level where we were expecting this to be quite a spectacle. Let's talk about that. We arrived safely on Friday at the venue, a core stadium, Stadium Australia, located in Sydney Olympic Park. This was actually pretty cool to be honest. We joked about it being almost galler style gym battles with Gigantamax monster holograms with Blue Eyes and Dark Magician. If only we could do such a thing. It's nice to dream. Upon making our way to the venue levels, we were met with a long hallway, which normally is the hallway that leads into the football stadium seating, uh, with one Konami table in the middle surrounded with a long queue and with either end of the hallway flanked with a vendor each way. Open on the Friday upstairs was a game hall, which was actually just a repurposed corporate box, and on the original floor there were some closed doors, which are into the convention, dining style, 
uh, I guess, event box that they've got set up there, which turns out was the main event location on the Saturday and Sunday. My initial impressions were quite whelmed, particularly at some of the Konami run aspects. Let's get this out of the way from the start. There was no prize pool. One of my most anticipated things traveling thousands of kilometers to this was getting some sick goods to take home. Reading into US Konami run YCS events, the prize wall is a staple. Players are rewarded with tickets based on their match wins and public events or side events, as I already mentioned, with it only needing as little as two match wins to take home some form of a playmat. But this was completely absent, with the only way to win a prize at this YCS, either by making top cut in a full registered event, such as Attack of the Giant card or Ultimate Time Wizard, or winning an on-demand 8 bracket event in the case of Winamats or Time Wizard. Which leads to our next matter, the side event organization. That super long line I mentioned earlier was the lineup for these public events or side events. Since our main priority was getting some Edison Time Wizard mats in the prize of the form of the Light and Darkness Dragon, we asked if they're running any of these on Friday as they were advertised, only to be told there were none being run. Upon further asking, we were basically told if we could find the 8 players ourselves, they'd run it. Now, while this is my first wise yes, should the event organizers not be responsible for organizing of the events? So with that ruled out and the stupid long line for winner mats with no prize wall, meaning you had to go completely undefeated to make it to any form of a prize, along with only two vendors which we've simply sifted through in five minutes, feeling deflated, disappointed, and like we shouldn't have wasted the hour-long Uber trip it took to get here, we just headed back to our hotel with no further reason to stay on the Friday. For Saturday, we made our way to the venue nice and early for the main event. This started strong with some great opponents in my first two rounds that showed me how much of an impact good people in this community can have on a player experience. My round 3 was okay, but my opponent played a little long, which would normally be fine, except for round 3, when it commenced is when you were allowed to then collect your entry packs and participation coins, a coin notably marketed as Wildstock's last online. These coins are a staple for YCS events, you basically get them by coming and it's just a participation thing, um, but we didn't know how many would be on offer unfortunately. Despite winning my round 3 2-0, I only had about 10 minutes left on the match clock upon entering the ridiculously long line. Jaden, who at this point dropped, was already through the line. He'd already gotten his coin and a show bag even. Despite maybe 50% of the venue being in line, round 4 matchups were posted and the line fanned out to get to the tables. I now had a calculated risk to make. I was X1 at the time, do I forfeit my place in the line and go take to the table for round 4, or do I just stay in the line and get my coin? The only reason this was a decision is due to the Wild Stock's last variety of the coins, and this was a 900 plus player event. Do I stay and get my coin, making me X2 and losing any chance of making top cut? Or do I guarantee going home with something, considering the way this event's being run, not being very friendly for taking home any form of souvenirs? I chose to stay in the line. It only took about three more minutes to get through the line anyway, and it did mean I guaranteed my coin, but by that point I could see games already going, so there's no point taking my place for round four table and just embarrassing myself. I pretty much did this because I bet on not making top cut anyway, and just wanted to avoid flying home empty-handed. This choice kind of paid off, because I picked up the BLS coin, which was absolutely my top pick for the coin I wanted, considering it was my very first Yu-Gi-Oh card and starter deck Yu-Gi Evolution. However, this was a choice I probably should never even had the chance to make. If it was as simple as the event being run a little better, I wouldn't have had to worry about missing out on my coin, and having to throw a round to guarantee I got it. If we had even just a prize wall, I would have been fine missing out on the coin, because I knew as the weekend went on, I would have been able to pick up a playmat or something else to take home on Sunday. With this having happened, however, I decided to drop. There was really no point being X2, the format wasn't enjoying anyway, I was sick of playing against Snake Eye, so we decided to see what kind of on-demand events we could get going for the Saturday. Especially since Jayden was dropped already anyway, it gave me someone to sort of play with. At this point, they were only running winner mats, but we managed to organize an on-demand 8-person Time Wizard tournament thanks to some other people that are interested in doing Time Wizard as well. Through talking to these, we learned some interesting stories about other people's experiences throughout the weekend. While yesterday we were told we had to find our own players, this group shared some different messages given by Konami staff and judges. Some were apparently even told we're not even doing Time Wizard on the Friday, only to later be told upon asking again, oh no, we did it earlier, you missed it. Perhaps due to my mood, I lost this on-demand event round one, and so I joined my partner outside the stadium for burgers and drinks, which was far more entertaining than anything on the day that happened up to that point. Part of the reason that I joined Chelsea outside of burgers and drinks is because of her experience at the venue, but I'll be saving that to the end of this video, because as a non-Yu-Gi-Oh player, I think her experience was perhaps the most damning part of this event. With that, we enjoyed a nice night of drinking with Jaden as well once he caught up, and onwards to Sunday for the final day of the tournament. 
Oh my god, this day was so much better. Upon making our way to the venue, I had a game plan. Today was the ultimate Time Wizard tournament, and due to the lack of price tickets, only a top 8 would secure anything worth the time playing. So I put out a call, looking to purchase one Light and Darkness Dragon playmat on social media. This, safe to say, felt quite wrong. I had paid to come all this way, and I had to take to Facebook groups to ensure I didn't go home empty-handed. But I didn't want to take my chances of missing out on Top Cut and missing out on anything whatsoever. Regardless of that, playing the Edison event itself was an absolute blast. All my opponents were top tier people and playing the format on paper was phenomenal considering our locals doesn't even have a Time Wizard scene yet. I went X2, drop at round 3 unfortunately, however, something phenomenal was happening. Jaden was X0 at round 3, then X1, then still X1, now he's 5-1 going into round 7. Last round of Swiss on his first Paper Edison tournament at a YCS event. Jaden was bubbling on Top Cut. This was brilliant. This was phenomenal. At this point, I'm team cheerleader. I'm the Yugi to his Joey, cheering him on. Come on, Joey, summon that red eyes. Despite the impossible task that making Top Cut of the Edison event fell with 128 players, Jaden had a chance. Sadly, this story doesn't have a happy ending. Jaden went 5-2 in round seven, going to a game three for a 20th place finish. A win in that game 3 would have secured a top 8, and Jaden was unfortunately now going home empty handed. While this was going on, I managed to secure my Light and Darkness playmat from Facebook groups for quite a hefty penny unfortunately, but it meant I was now going home with something to take of my own. During this time, I was playing the winner mats. I managed to make a final with a goal trying to win the Unchained winner mat that Jaden had his eye on that unfortunately he didn't have the time to try win himself due to being in the Time Wizard tournament. However, I did lose this one due to exhaustion, unfortunately. Our locals usually meet once a week for three to four round tournaments, so a two and a half day event with the amount of games we were playing was just too much for me and it drained my mental capacity. To avoid Jaden being done dirty, I once again put out a call trying to secure Jaden one of these Unchained playmats through Facebook Marketplace. Why do I draw so much attention to the usage of Facebook to get these playmats? Well, with Jaden's performance, if this is handled like a YCS event in America, he secured enough prize tickets to go home with quite a nice playmat, if not two playmats of just nice quality. Maybe even the Unchained one he even wanted to win! Similarly, I would be able to get my own Sneak Peep playmat, which are quite hard to win in our locals considering we only get one every time, and it just usually goes to the same people and they sell it anyway. And However, without a ticket wall, nothing. Nothing for our performances, especially Jaden's performance, which was brilliant, and how many games he won, how well he was doing it. Now, I understand there may be an expectation that since you already paid your entry and you get it back in the form of prize packs, that is true. But I can buy packs of Yu-Gi-Oh cards without traveling thousands of kilometers. Even our locals awards prizing based on number of match wins, not based on arbitrary cutoff number after wasting the entire day and losing any opportunity to enter any other events to win prizes there. My call was successful and Jaden did secure his Unchained playmat, and while we were now both going home with beautiful playmats to claim to our own, we didn't want to take a photo with them at the venue. We know we didn't win them, and it did feel a little empty. However, the event didn't give us the chance to win anything, despite our efforts. In the end, this is often called a children's card game. I am an adult, disappointed to be going home empty-handed, despite being very proud of how many matches I did end up winning at my performance over the weekend. How would a kid feel? Despite his parents taking him here all weekend, playing and winning matches and getting only a single coin to show for it. And only if he ensured to line up before they ran out of coins as well. Imagine a kid saving all his allowance to enter the main cut, the Time Wizard Edison, all these winner mats, spending upwards of even a hundred, two hundred dollars, and going home with a single coin! That's dumb! While these are ultimately my perspectives as a duelist myself, I wanted to know how the other members of Team Deck Lab were feeling about the YCS, so we did a bit of a Q&A and we got back about how we were feeling in the event. What were your expectations and personal goals for this YCS. My expectations were to play the best of my ability and see how I'd go around round three, if I should drop or not, and focus on side events and prizes to make the most of my first time experience. To have fun, to, to take names, and, and, and kick ass. After Friday, what were your first impressions of the YCS? Underwhelming, but still very cool. Like, I thought we were going to like this convention with tables in the middle where we could do all this cool shit. Uh, but it was just a big locals with vendors. 
I, I, I liked it. Uh, I, I liked that it was like big locals sort of scene. For me personally, it was good. Um, yeah, like it, it was awesome. Like, 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 after I, like, you know, kind of settled down when we got home, like, we'll go back to the hotel on the Friday, it's kind of dawned on me, like, man, I was expecting a lot bigger. How were your interactions with players and with the staff throughout the weekend? Yeah, staff, they, uh, they, they answered my questions immediately, and they seemed to be on the ball for my games, in particular. Um, like, I, they could have done better for, like, the side events. Like, I, I heard a lot of complaints that they weren't really there for them but for the actual main event i think they did a pretty decent job yeah like, you're gonna hear a lot of this you're gonna hear a lot of the same points from me on that i i do think that all my interactions with the people and players were fantastic i don't really I, I heard that there were bad people there and some bad experiences there uh from others in our party but personally i never encountered a single one of those type of people so nothing but great interactions on my end uh but yeah the staff that were running the side events were really not what I expected or wanted, but that's that comes down to more the management of side events themselves. Yeah. They just it just wasn't there, bro. It, yeah, it lack there. of direction and it really was. They're just like, yeah, look, the the guys outside were just there to take names and give out the prizes in the paper, and then they made a self run, and like that's okay. I I don't the self running isn't really the problem. It's the fact that there was no supervision, um, in any capacity. Like 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 I don't know like. We needed judges still, like, like just because we know the format doesn't mean that, you know, a neutral party isn't needed. Yeah, we could have we could have it would have been fine to just have one of the many judges who weren't doing a lot to just float around every now and then and say, hey, what's going on? What do you think should be done to improve the event overall? What what Prize what wall. could improve the event overall? Prize wall. Prize wall. <laughs> Better dispersion um... of stuff. Um, yeah, staff for sure. You know, I mean, like, like I'm not even gonna go as far as to say that the event we went to didn't have the staff to do what we wanted or expected of them. They just weren't doing it. You know what I mean? And I can I understand Yu-Gi-Oh judges are players first as well as volunteers. You know what I mean? They don't get paid to do this. They're ultimately here to experience the event themselves and get prizes. You know what I mean? Like, 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 like gifts. You know what okay. I mean? Uh, so I understand they're they're not being paid other than you know play mats or sleeves whatever the fuck, uh, but still the fact that there it seems like there was definitely judges being underutilized for what they were there to do, um, and Konami themselves or at least the representatives of Konami were not delivering on the promises and the advertisements like on the website. I'm, I'm sure they got plenty of people because it wasn't just us that was salty. Uh, showing them the official Konami page outlining the event, showing them in bold letters on demand tournaments. Yeah, they had it to printed. Only, it was even printed on the only, wall. Yeah, even printed on the wall, only to be turned away saying we're not running tournaments. I'm like, that that that's not how this works. I'm sorry, but that's not what's advertised, and that is not how this should be going on. Like, this is on demand. We are here, the player base demanding the play. Like, I can even I can even get by. The whole prize wall thing. Yes, it would have been nice to have all of our points accumulate to a prize wall that we could have gone to at any point to get some cool memento and all that kind of stuff. Uh, you know, like Mason, you left pretty early. You you left like the middle of the day on the Sunday. If you, you accumulated a lot of points over that weekend, I'm sure, you could have gone to the prize wall, picked up a mat that you've been wanting and seeing on eBay for ages or some cool sleeves that you've been wanting for your deck. You could have picked those up, left, great souvenir. We yeah. could have done the same towards the end of the day. Yeah. No, we had to buy our stuff. It's still a memento. It's still something that I I, I, I appreciate and I like that I was able to do, uh, because you know that's the player base and that's where we were. But I would have preferred to earn my prizes. I would have preferred to say, "Yep, I worked for this." I think even if it's a lesser prize, like even if it's, you don't get enough tickets for a winner mat, even if you can pick up like a sneak peek mat. Even picking up a mat that, while isn't particularly rare, is still something that we would not have had the chance to win our own locals, and we would have ultimately won for that event, regardless of it being a pretty not coveted, ex rare as mat, it would still have a lot of personal value. Ultimately, it seems that I have perhaps the most negative opinion out of the group, with I think Mason having the most positive overall, but there is a common theme. We do feel a little hard done by considering the effort and the time and the distance we put into this event, 
with how little we kind of got out of it. Jaden put it quite nicely. It was a super locals at the end of the day. Perhaps this is just a Konami EU problem, but it is still a Yu-Gi-Oh! TCG problem. These are tier 3 premier flagship events. They should be equal worldwide. When you have a look at the events they have in Europe and America that I've been showing footage of throughout this video, you can see the difference. When you compare it to the canned footage I've got, which is all I have because there was no coverage of this event. There wasn't a blog post for any of the rounds. There was no top cut. This was even the same at the event itself. I even saw on social media as the weekend was going on, most people didn't even know there was a YCS on this weekend. How? When it comes to the in-person coverage of the event as well, there was no main stage to view with spectators. This is something they've done in the past, particularly pre-COVID. Uh, we've got a lot of the coverage even out of Australian events. And I don't know why this isn't back yet, unfortunately. Even come the finals on Sunday, they stated they had set up a viewing area for Top Cut, but upon my going to look at this area, it was... Match tables, surrounded by a wall of tables, too far away to see anything, done so ultimately the duelists aren't distracted, but to the detriment of the viewers. As even Chelsea said, they had the upstairs room. Why didn't they run the event up there in terms of spectating, have commentary and the video feed down in the main room for everyone just to view and watch? It would have just been a much better time for other people. And speaking of Chelsea, perhaps the best person to comment on the event as a spectator and as a non-player is her, someone who doesn't play Yu-Gi-Oh. Chelsea came along with this event ultimately as the Taya in our little Duelist Kingdom deck lab team we had funnily enough constructed. She was here ultimately just to watch, cheer us on, and try have a good time throughout the whole thing. And her experiences can only be done justice with her own words. What were your feelings of Yu-Gi-Oh before the event? How did you feel about the product, the card game, the, the franchise of Yu-Gi-Oh? I don't get it. You don't get it? I don't get the hype. It's yeah. stupid. No offense. Did you think this event had maybe like a chance of enticing you in any way? Well, maybe it would have been like, I don't know, seen actually cool people doing something. Do you think this event could have done a similar thing to what the motorsport events you'd been to had done? Yeah, I think so, it would have, because usually, like when we went to the V8, I didn't really want to go to that, but then I actually had a really good time, so I ended up liking the Vroom Vroom. For the event, as someone that wasn't playing, did you think it was set up very well to be a spectator? No. No? There was no way to watch the things. I wanted to like watch you guys play because like I was there for support, friendship and shit, you know? Um, <laughs> yeah. But it was just chairs and tables. I was expecting like maybe it was like going to be like a bleacher. Yeah, like something like that for people who weren't playing to go sit on and you can like watch and like you'll see it on like the cameras. Yeah. Was there any way there you... There was like a viewing area for people who weren't playing and like... You could go chill there and wait for your friends to come back from doing whatever they were doing, you know, instead of hovering around the tables that were already very packed. How were some of your interactions at the event? Oh, they were so lovely. Everyone there was so kind, so camp. What were some, what were some stories you've got of some, some interactions you had throughout the weekend? Friday sucked. I deleted that day from my brain. Yeah, because it was just a waste of, ta waste of travel for you. It was just, oh, I could have just chilled at the lobby at the hotel. I wish I did. God. Friday was, Friday was day. fine. Like, I didn't have any issues with anyone on Friday. Friday was fine. That's why I went the next day. I regret going the next day. So what happened the next day? How was your Saturday? Shitty. Everyone there is so awful. Everywhere I looked, I got, like, the dirtiest daggers I've ever got in my life. So I was chilling by myself most of the day while they were doing their thing. And then I would look up and then there'll just be some bloke staring at me like like that do you feel it was because you weren't playing or because it was you were a woman or because it was both 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 because there was a lot of girls there not a lot of girls there was a couple girls but all the girls that i saw they were playing the game and they seemed very chill with those girls but they didn't like me and the ones that weren't playing, you said they were always with, like, a partner or someone. Yeah, they were, they were never, like, separate. Dude. They were always with someone. Like, that one girl we met. She was always with, like, two or three guys. I was all by myself for most of the day. It was a shit day. I didn't want to be there. And there were a few guys that, like, approached you, didn't they? 
Right, that's right. I forgot about that. I was walking down and he was walking down. He was on his phone, right? And I was looking and I was like, oh, I should probably move out the way because, like, he's not going to look at me because he's on his little, little phone. And then I move and then he's walking and I'm walking and we still collide. And he turns around and goes, get the fuck out of my way! Mate, chill. So they went to play their little game, right? And Jaden left me his little box of cards. And I was chilling in the little hallway where the door opens. And if you went to the Taylor Swift concert, you know what I'm talking about. And like it would open and you'll be like, what's it called? Like the way out to the stadium seating. We, we did stadium. a bit of a vlog there so I could put footage up the for it. The stadium, right? We would, you would, those doors would be at the stadium and they weren't allowed to go out those doors anyway and some guy came and he tried to open the door and he was like get the fuck out of my way a lot of duelists were trying to go out to the stadium area to have smokes because the only other way to go outside was to go all the way back down to the one singular entrance to the ground floor and they were just like I don't want to bother so they kept going out to the stadium security had to keep pulling them in which considering the event organizers told us hey this place has been really good to us make sure you're on your best behavior I was sitting, my back was on the wall, and my legs were spit out. And then he came, and he like, oh, get the fuck out, I want to go outside. And I was like, moving my things, I'm like, I'm sorry, no, 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 I'm sorry. And then he kicked the deck that Jaden left me, he kicked it, and the cards went everywhere. So then I counted his cards, he had 82 cards. Yeah, because it was just a loose stack of cards from, like, the, the entry pools. Yeah. So you tried finding us then, and yeah. you couldn't find us. So I went upstairs, because I don't want to myself anymore. So I went upstairs, and like they went there, and I was like, well, that's rude. But I'm just going to chill at one of these empty tables, because there's a lot of empty tables upstairs. So I'm, I'm going to chill up there, because it was nice and cold too, so I wanted to hang out there for a little bit. And I was sitting there, and I was playing on my phone, and I was watching YouTube, and doing my own little thing. And then some bloke came up to me, and he was like, oh, what deck are you playing? And I was like, oh, I'm not playing. And he... Wait, yeah. Yeah, and he was just humbugging me on what deck, and then I was like, bro, I don't care, please go away. You didn't really have any, what I would call, basic human interactions with people. And the interactions you had with guys were all, like, nerd interactions. And I would honestly say, you're a little nerdy, but you are not a nerd. Thank you're you. a pretty normal person. When I say a normal interaction, that's like a, hey, how's your day? Oh, how are you going? And you didn't, you didn't get to have any normal people conversations. No, he just came up, sat at the table, started asking me about the deck, and I was like, I don't know, I'm not playing the game. And I don't know why he just kept thinking that I was just trying to, like, dodge him or something, but, like, I, d I didn't know how to answer his questions. He just kept talking about you, and I was like, bro, please leave. Yeah. You gotta come down and and be like, hey, how you doing? Why are you by yourself? No, okay, creep away. Do you think you were treated differently as a girl that wasn't playing compared yes. to some of the girls you saw that were playing? Yes. Because everyone that I saw who was girls that was playing, a lot of the guys were really nice to them and like smiling with them and like if they walked by they were like smile at each other. But every time I looked up I got like a really dirty look. You felt like there was a bit of a why are you here? Yeah. Yeah. So for this event, how do you think this event's affected your perspective on Yu-Gi-Oh? Both the game and, like, the player base and I'm stuff. I'm never going to go to a Yu-Gi-Oh event ever in my life. That's why I didn't go the third day. I stayed home. I stayed at the hotel. I did my own thing. I went out to go get my nails done, but there was, everyone was closed because it was Sunday, and I didn't understand it, but everything was closed and it was weird. Yeah, and you only came to the tournament on Sunday, basically, to, to meet up with us yeah, at the end. Yeah, and get some food. I was hungry. And be a camera home. woman, because we needed one, because Mason ditched. Oh yeah, I took their photos. Yeah, you were a great photographer for the last day to get our shots. You're welcome. Yeah. That's okay. But yeah, I'm probably never going to go again. I'm not even going to bother trying to learn this game. I had like the Yugo thing on my phone. Yeah, you did. You had um... Deleted now. Was it Duel Links or Master Duel? It was one of them. One of them. I had one of them to play with you. But I deleted it now. Never trying that. I'm good. Yeah. This is... Damning. Chelsea's experience with this event as a spectator, as a woman, and as someone who doesn't play Yu-Gi-Oh, show a gross problem with the community at large. When someone who's not a fan goes to an event, this is a big opportunity to entice them. I'm a huge motorsport fan. I follow everything from supercars to Formula One. Chelsea, when she met me, similarly to Yu-Gi-Oh, had zero interactions with motorsport. But after a supercar weekend and some drive to survive, she was intrigued. And after her experience at the Oz GP, she's a fan for life. That's the power a premier event has on prospective fans. This YCS could not be more of an opposite to those motorsport events for her if it tried. This event was alienating both to a player and to a spectator. 
something probably needs to change. Some of these issues, particularly in the player base, are not dependent on the event and are universal for the Yu-Gi-Oh! community at large. This community has a problem with respect. Respect for themselves, for their fellow duelists, and unfortunately, women and spectators. Something, likewise, need to change for how these YCS in non-US cities are run. No one should travel this far and have to resort to Facebook groups to ensure they go home with something for the event. Something Konami's policy, by the way, doesn't allow to happen on tournament grounds. If someone wins a mat, they cannot legally sell it at the event. This can and deserves to be better. For the amount of profit this game generates, it should be better. In making this video, I wanted to highlight our criticisms, because only through critique can something grow to be better. With that said, perhaps the biggest question to all four of us is, will you go to an Australian YCS again? Absolutely. Yeah, no, definitely. No, I'm never going again. I feel the positives some of us took, the duelist interactions that showed some of the absolute best of the community, the excitement and challenges of an event like this for a duelist, and the pride we felt in our performance in line with our personal goals we had set, managed to outweigh the negatives. But for the trek this was, it should not be this close of a balance. At this point, maybe we just have Stockholm Syndrome.